closed season, the Panthers had picked up ex-Sheffield Steelers tough guy Corey Bolian. And shortly after the opening face-off, he made Frank Kovacs realise that he had no split loyalties with a fight that didn't even allow Kovacs to take off his gloves. Robin's shoulder. It was yet more physical attention for the Steelers as Scott Allison got his elbows a little high on Jarrett Sikuski. Sikuski seemed a little dazed and that can only explain why he wanted to go center ice with Scott Allison. We all know there's only ever going to be one winner there. Again, a couple of good early shots. Sikuski takes a beautiful right from Scott Allison. That was his face battered and bruised for the whole game. this Glenn Mulvina shot and of course Trevor Robbins sums equal to the save well this is a little fight going on now and Greg Haddon and Mike Bodnachuk have got themselves all hot and bothered about something they're going for a big sit down shortly well I think that's resurrected itself from about a shift or two beforehand where Mike Bodnachuk got pulled down deep in Nottingham territory with that and I think that was a result of a confrontation between these two players. Well, Bodnachuk uh, isn't finished yet but uh, he's being chaperoned back. Well there you can see uh, how it all began. Well Bodnachuk definitely initiated it and you can see he gets in close there. He's got a couple of haymakers going but Haddon manages to bring him to the ground. I think he got one back himself but as soon as those players hit that ice Steve that's when the two linesmen go in and they try and break the play up. Caught with one defenseman moving forward, John Wynn, and Tony Hand had to do a good job. Oh, and here back. we go. There's a fight with Jarrett Sikuski getting really stuck in there. Is that with Big Falkenhall? I think that's no, Jamie, Jamie Vanderhorst. Vanderhorst. I'll tell you what. Two guys smaller in size, but you saw it. They went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. 
And that's what I call an exceptional ice hockey fight. They don't come better than that. That must have been 30 seconds. Each guy landed probably 15, 20 punches. And his reaction to the crowd as he skated to the penalty bench suggested that Jamie van der Horst thought he'd won that one. And two plus two each for roughing. Well, I think the complimentary calls here, but you can see both getting those right hands loose. And they're taking a crack at one another. Again, nobody gets hurt in a situation like that. Perhaps J.B. Vanderhorst knuckles there because Zakuski still had his helmet on. Jamie van der Horst, as I said, Eric uh, Jarrett Zakuski's had his fair share of penalty minutes. He's only just come off the a three game winning streak for only the second time this season. It looks as though that might be a bit difficult as Corey Bolio drops the gloves with Derek Laxton in the corner. Laxton and Bolio. Bolio, the former Steeler, Laxton, the former Panther, having a go at each other. And they'll be off. They're going to be sitting down for at least two plus two for roughing, I guess. Well, that was a challenge of two heavyweights, but uh, it didn't work out to that because it looks like Derek Laxtell kind of lost his footing there. But Derek Laxtell on some aggressive forechecking, and he's again finishing his check off. Both standing there looking at one another. They take a crack. Bolio gets a couple of strong right hands there, but they both go down. And as a result, the linesman will go in at that stage and try and break the fight up. So roughing calls for both of them, and that means that Derek Laxdahl picks up four more minutes to go with the two minutes he picked up in the first period. And that means that Corey Bolio now has eight minutes altogether. You can see there Mike Bishop, he's serving a ten-minute personal penalty for abuse of an official. That was carried over from the second period. So, we've got three players sitting on the penalty benches, but we remain five on five. Very standard procedure. Two players. because we've got over two and a half minutes left on this game yet. Nottingham doing the right thing though, they're being very aggressive. They're getting it into the Nottingham zone and making sure, or into the Cardiff zone and making sure it stays there. Weaver is the player playing without his helmet at the moment. Carpenter and Chin having a little tussle out there on the blue line. Some big hits there. There's Weaver, Jason Weaver without the helmet. Weaver getting involved, there's going to be a penalty here, and it's a delayed penalty, Colsar can settle it now, Colsar goes round, oh. Minor, and Colsar on the delayed penalty, gets the goal, Mark Colsar, Mike McWilliam is taking on, Weaver on the far side, Mike McWilliam has completely lost it, well, it's not the first time he's done that this season, frustration no doubt part of the cause, because the Nottingham Panthers 
could very well just have won this game with that great goal. Well, that's it. That's Carpenter down at the other end. Carpenter obviously took quite a big hit there. Well, I'll tell you what, I, my opinion here, Steve, has just been a complete lack of discipline on behalf of the Cardiff Devils. And, you know, sure, they're frustrated here. They're, uh, you know, Nottingham just scored and they're down 3-1 with less than just over two minutes left to go in the game. But, you know, they, they, they don't need that. Uh, Evans, you know, he took about three shots at, uh, at Weaver and then uh, McWilliams hit him a couple times and then Evans comes in and, and nails him with a few shots. I mean... You know, Paul's got to have a little bit more control of his team than that. I mean, that's just a terrible display of sportsmanship as far as I'm concerned. Well, it all just fell to pieces for the Cardiff Devils at that point, and that could be the moment that they lose the lead. Still plenty of games to go. They can catch the Manchester Storm, but... Well, look, you know, here we are. Giveaway again by Cardiff. We talked about it. Colsar makes a great goal here and uh, puts his team ahead and uh, I'll tell you what it was nice patience by Kolsar he kind of Herlowski's a good goaltender he stands his ground but Kolsar just kind of waits him out and puts it in the empty net very nice goal there's another look of it nice little shift waits him out there wasn't a lot of room to slip it in there but he slips it in well nice there's all sorts Kolsar. of arguments still going on Jamie Craper trying to get a uh, hold on this match again there you can see Mike McWilliam really getting stuck in there and, uh, and and also in there was Evans not happy at all you know we talk about two on ones uh, and there wasn't a lot of back checkers there I mean uh, two guys jumped uh, weave and he didn't have a lot of chance on the play you know he just kind of uh, took him by storm after the goal a very poor show of sportsmanship as far as I'm concerned Matulik is furious, he wants something done, and he's furious with the referee, Jamie Craper. And Nicky Chin is having to keep his own captain away from the officials. And part of the frustration must surely be the fact that they know that this game might very well have just gone from them. And there's Matulik. Jason Weaver was not a happy camper, and he decided to take it out on Scott Allison. And after getting a couple of good early blows in on Scott Allison, both of them had a good go at one another with it being a points victory for Jason Weaver. Both were given coincidental minor penalties to go and calm down. Whilst Weaver and, and Allison were in the box, it was Richard Uniac that stepped forward and with a lovely finish, put the Steelers ahead for nothing. As this was going on, Scott Allison stormed out of the penalty box and decided to take matters into his own hand. Scott Allison easily winning the first half of the fight and just as they hit the ice, Weaver got back on top. Scott Allison, not a man that you would like to upset. Scott even gave us a slap shot finish. This time though, it was the battle of the exes. It was ex-Nottingham Panther Derek Laxtell versus ex-Sheffield Steeler Corey Bollier. You'd say the fight ended in a draw, but a little rabbit punch in the back of Laxtell's head, whilst on the floor, gave him a concussion, which pretty much kept him out of the game for the whole season. As Nottingham's frustration grew, so did the number of incidents. Yet another rook just near the far end of the arena saw Tommy Plummer not very happy with Graham Garden. After a lot of pushing and shoving, it looked like really it was only going to be handbags at 10 paces. Graham Garden stepped to the side and Tommy Plummer asked him if maybe he would just like to get it on. Very shortly the gloves were dropped and they were ready to go. Tommy Plummer got it on and he gave Graham Garden a real lesson in how you do South Pool boxing.
has got his first point in British ice hockey. At the moment, it's a lament for the Air Scottish Eagles. Or is it a call to battle, a rallying cry? There's going to be another penalty, a delayed penalty, another opportunity for Air to go on the power play. There's a little bit of pushing and shoving. An elbows call has been made. Nottingham Panthers are going to have to do more penalty killing shortly. Well, Scott Young involved there, Simon Hunt and Zakuski pairing off with Scotty Young, but on this play, where the penalty's called to Steve Roberts, this is an open hitting defenseman's dream. Look at this, baby. Because Da Costa just stands Vieta, and that allows Carpenter to just move right into the play, and oh, wow, that baby hurts. Steve Carpenter picks up another two penalty minutes. Elbows the call this time. He's sitting there alongside Darcy Lowen. He's on the left of Darcy Lowen, Steve Carpenter. Well, we saw a very quick start by the Air Scottish Eagles to the second period, but I now see a bit of a momentum change in favor of the Nottingham Panthers now. They're starting to get the legs moving a little bit. Another penalty is being called, though. It's going to be the Nottingham Panthers shorthanded again. They'll have to test out that penalty killing. Well, all kinds of bodies in, in the air territory there. You've even got Vincent Riendo. He's out of his net, not happy with it. Jeff Ho, Porter, nodding on Panther. He's one of the guys that has played and won two cup finals. And he's a fierce competitor. He's got a great reputation. There's Darcy Lowen. What does he do well? Boy, he finishes his checks off. And he's making the air. Scottish Eagles pay on that one. And there's nothing worse than going straight into that barrier. Boy, baby, that one hurts. Well, Darcy Lowen is going to get 2 plus 10 for checking from behind. And there's going to be a penalty on air as well. Well, that's the very call that Kurt Kleinendorf was concerned about. And I suppose to a certain extent, it was a discretionary call, but you got Darcy Lowen going into the penalty box. He's got the 2 plus 10 on the checking from behind. And in fact, they opened the penalty bench for the Air Scottish Eagles, but then Mike Rowe didn't call a penalty. That's where the faceoff will be. There's a look at Paul Eady following himself through, going into the net. But Alan Schuler's there making sure that he's got his man as well. And there's well, the two guys, eh? Schuler yeah. and Paul First Eady. part of the game. And it's Alan Sula up against Paul Lady, an unlikely combination, that really, Paul Lady. But obviously something was said, presumably about Paul Lady getting involved with knocking the net off and driving onto Riendo, maybe. Well, I haven't seen so much in the fisticuffs in terms of Alan Schuler, but certainly Paul Lady has over the years, and uh, he's a rough, tough customer, but both guys got their fair share in on this one as they both head to the penalty box. You know, that's going to be Alan Schuler's first penalty in this competition of this particular season. He hadn't drawn a single penalty, Alan Schuler, in the bench and Hedges Cup till now. Well, there's a situation you can see it when two guys square off. You try and get in tight and you want to get the odd.
a little later, River King Darby Walker gets into a fight and receives backup from Raw. Dubois and try and pick that up. Interesting point from Nick. A very interesting point because we know that they love to overload. Here we got our first physical battle of the game tonight. And that's uh, Zakuski having a real tussle there. And well, throwing quite a few punches there, aren't they? Todd Kelman and Jarrett Zakuski getting stuck into each other. They dropped the gloves, not quite sure what sparked it off. Well, it uh, was a situation where Zukowski and, and Kelman both got their sticks up over in the boards, and you can see that uh, Kelman was taking advantage of Zukowski's high stick, and uh, they decided both to go at it, and it was a, a good battle. I'll tell you right now, Bracknell does not want to get too many defensemen involved in penalties with only four defense they'll wear down it very very much so for the third period but uh, it's a situation in a battle like this you have to go to now we've still got McEwen chin and priest out there the kind of doubles that's a big hit by Bolio on McEwen and it's illegal and elbows was called against Corey Bolio his first penalty of the game he doesn't look impressed by Andy Carson's call but it's going to be a power play for the Cardiff Devils after Corey Bolio made this hit on McEwen, he didn't even leave the area. You'll see it's right in front of the referee, right in the penalty box. And he gets his elbow up on McEwen and uh, stands and looks at the referee and knows the call is going to be made. And uh, he's got his first penalty of this game, and it's a big power play for Cardiff Devils and a very big penalty. 